The skin, subcutaneous tissue, hair, nails, and glands are all part of the integumentary system. Its major role is to shield the body from the environment by acting as a barrier against pathogens, UV radiation, fluid loss, and mechanical stress. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin, is composed of five different layers, each with a unique function. The stratum corneum, the surface layer, is made up of dead skin cells and provides a barrier against physical damage, environmental stress, and waterproofing. Thicker skin may have a thin layer of dead cells known as the stratum lucidum. The stratum granulosa contains granules that release lipids to maintain skin moisture. The stratum spinosa has cells that are in a constant state of division and migrate upward, as well as longer hound cells that play a key role in skin defense. The innermost layer, the stratum basale, contains stem cells that continually divide and replace dead skin cells, as well as melanocytes that produce melanin to protect against UV rays. The epidermis is very thin at only 0.1 millimeter and regenerates new cells every 28 days. Keratinocytes, the most abundant cells in the epidermis, create keratin, the protein that gives shape to hair and nails. Melanocytes hold melanin pigment, which provides color to the skin and hair, and acts as a defense against UV radiation. The amount of melanin determines skin color, with more melanin equating to a darker complexion, and hair color is determined by the type and quantity of melanin in the hair. The dermis is a circulatory layer of connective tissue that lies underneath the epidermis. The blood supply to the skin is confined to the dermal papillary capillaries, or plexus. A deeper arterial plexus supplies these capillary loops. Hair follicles and sweat glands are also supplied by branches from the deep plexus. Arterial venous anastomoses, or junctions, in the dermis help control body temperature by altering blood flow through the skin. Through alpha adrenergic receptors in the skin, the sympathetic nervous system regulates both vasoconstriction and vasodilation. The skin's lymphatic vessels emerge from the papillary dermis and drain into larger subcutaneous trunks, where they remove cells, proteins, and immunologic mediators. The dermis is separated into two layers. The upper thin papillary layer, which is folded into ridges known as papillae, that extend to the upper epidermal layer, resulting in fingerprints and footprints. And the lower thick papillary layer, which is not folded into ridges. The deeper or thicker reticular layer includes collagen, which provides mechanical strength to the skin, as well as elastic and reticular fibers. The fibroblast is a main cell of the dermis, and produces collagen and elastin fibers, which plays a major role in wound healing. The hypodermis, or lower layer of connective tissue, also known as subcutaneous tissue, comprises macrophages, fibroblasts, adipocytes, or fat cells, nerves, fine muscles, arteries, lymphatics, and hair follicle roots. It's mostly made up of fat and loose connective tissue, and it serves as insulation. The hypodermis is not a layer of skin, rather it connects the skin to underlying structures such as muscle and bone. It also serves to store lipids, regulate temperature, and absorb stress. If you are finding value in this video, then please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And check out the link in the description to purchase an instant digital download of the Integumentary System and Disorders Nursing Notes, which includes written notes on the Integumentary System Anatomy and Functions. Now let's review dermal appendages, which are the hair, nails, and glands. Hair can vary greatly in color, density, and distribution. Hair follicles arise from the matrix located deep in the dermis and have an erector pili muscle attached near the mid-dermis that strains the follicle when contracted, causing the hair to stand up. Hair growth is cyclic, with periods of growth and rest that vary over different body surfaces. Hair loss or absence can be related to disease, treatment, or heredity. Nails are protective, keratinized plates that appear at the ends of fingers and toes. They have several structures, including the proximal nail fold and cuticle, epinicium, 
which is responsible for cuticle development, matrix, nail roots, hyponychium, also known as the quick, and perinychium, the soft tissue surrounding the nail border. Sebaceous and sweat glands are the two primary kinds of glands present on the human body. Sebaceous glands, which are found on all parts of the skin except the palms and soles, secrete sebum, which is a lipid-rich material that keeps the skin and hair from drying out. Sweat glands are classified in the two types, apocrine and acrine. Apocrine glands exude a thick, milky liquid that becomes odoriferous when changed by the skin surface bacteria and are found in the axillae, breast areola, umbilical and anal genital regions, external auditory canals, and eyelids. Eccrine glands are found all throughout the body and generate sweat, which is a clear, watery fluid containing salts, ammonia, urea, and other bodily wastes. Normal bacterial flora on the skin includes a variety of types, such as gram-positive and gram-negative staphylococci, pseudomonas species, and streptococcus species. These organisms are shed with normal exfoliation and are protected by the pH of the skin, which ranges from 4.2 to 5.6 and halts bacterial growth. The commensal or normal microorganisms of the skin also protect against pathologic bacteria. The skin's primary function is to protect the underlying tissues of the body by serving as a surface barrier to the external environment. It also acts as a barrier against invasion by bacteria and viruses, and prevents excessive water loss. The skin with its nerve endings and special receptors provides sensory perception for environmental stimuli. It receives stimuli from the external environment, such as touch, pressure, pain, and temperature, and relays this information to the nervous system. The skin also plays an important role in regulating body temperature through vasoconstriction or vasodilation. This is related to its function of excretion, which helps maintain homeostasis through fluid and electrolyte balance. The skin excretes salts, water, and organic waste. It also stores nutrients. The fat of the subcutaneous layer insulates the body and provides protection from trauma. Endogenous synthesis of vitamin D, which is critical to calcium and phosphorus balance, occurs in the epidermis. The skin also has aesthetic functions, such as the expression of various emotions and the person's individual appearance. It can also be used as a system for the delivery of medications, such as systemic drugs via patches or creams. Thank you for watching. Check out the link in the description to purchase an instant digital download of the Integumentary System and Disorders Nursing Notes. Have a fantastic day.